Hey YouTube, thank you so much for being here. So excited to see the viewership that we're getting here on YouTube. Make, be sure to subscribe. Subscribe on your favorite audio place, Apple, Spotify, we're at all those places. It is episode three of the Guatemala Guide. So excited that you're here. Be sure to follow us, Guate underscore guide on Instagram, on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. Episode three starts right now. All right. That one worked. Thank you so much for downloading today's episode or watching us here at YouTube. It is the Guatemala Guide. Subtract the the at the beginning. It's just Guatemala Guide. I'm your host, Aaron. Excited to have you here on episode three. If we were making Star Wars movies, we would be like a third of the way through. So take that one, George Lucas. Anyway, so excited that you're listening. As always, you can send us feedback, guide at protonmail.com. Leave us a comment on YouTube. Follow us, Twitter, Instagram. Already mentioned that. That's guate underscore guide. And if you're watching us on YouTube, thank you so much. Be sure to subscribe on Spotify, on Apple, one of the other places. There's a million of them out there. And today we're recording this live on Instagram. Not going to do this all the time, but just thought I'd try it out. See how it works out. So excited to have you here. It is episode three of the Guatemala Guide. And today we're talking about things to look out for or things to be aware of when you arrive in Guatemala. And as we start every episode of the show, today... I start with a story, and today is a story about my second trip to Guatemala, and on this second trip, I was on a trip with about 10 other people, including my wife. It was her first trip to Guatemala, and one of the things that you're going to see as you go through the airport when you arrive is, actually, first off, when you're on the plane, you're going to be giving a customs, given a customs declaration sheet. And on that sheet, you're going to answer questions about how long you're going to be here, how long um, it's going to be until you leave, and if you've brought things, custom form, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, you get that going. And when you go to customs, when you go to get your passport stamped, they, they take the front copy, which is white, and they hand you back this yellow sheet. And they don't tell you anything about it. So I'm telling you right now. So we go through, we land, we go through customs. We'd had such a long journey to get here on that, on that trip too, because we did a, first off where we lived in the States was like five hours from LAX, Los Angeles. So we had to drive to LA, we get on a plane to LA. Uh, it was a red eye flight to Panama city, which I'd love to spend time in Panama city, but we didn't get to during that. I'd love to to do that. Anyway, we got to Panama City, then had a two-hour layover, flew Panama City to Guatemala City. I don't recommend that whatsoever because that made for such a long day. I think we we left our house at like four or five in the afternoon, and we, we got to Guatemala City at something like eight or nine in the morning. Really long day. Anyway, so we do all that. We get to Guatemala, and... One of the guys that was with us on the trip, I'm just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, you know, what do they say? What do they call that? When you like expose somebody, I'm not going to give his name out, but we get there and I think he's the last person in line from, from our team, team of about 11 or 12 of us. We all get, get through security or uh, customs. We make it to the end and then he's starting to come towards the end and we see him getting, getting stopped up by the the custom agents and we're like well what in the world is going on here and it turns out that he had taken the yellow copy and thought that it was just a receipt or something and he threw it away well nobody uh, to his credit nobody ever told him to keep it but no one ever told him to throw it away either so he throws it away and it's gone i mean he can't find it and he figures oh well you know it'll be fine i'll, I'll still be able to just go through security and no, no harm, no foul. Uh, go through customs. I keep saying security. Go through customs. No harm, no foul. Well, no. 
he we he gets to the end of the the last step before you're just released into the world here and they're asking him for this slip everybody has to turn in that yellow sheet before you go out and he doesn't have it and so they they don't take lightly to it they make him go back and look for it in the trash and thankfully the trash that he had thrown it in hadn't been taken out but but he looked he had to remember where he took it and he went dug in the trash and he was gone i want to say for like 15 minutes or so we didn't know what was going to happen because we were already through customs and we weren't going to be able to go back and and help him in any way and he was stuck and so eventually like 20 minutes later he here he comes walking through the door and we're all like what the heck why did you throw that away not a no man and it was just it was it was unbelievable it was scary i mean it was only my second time in the country for a lot of people on the trip it was their first time and we didn't know what was going to happen and they made him go look for it so word to the to the wise word of the to I, however that works when you go through customs you fill out the sheet fill it out correctly and don't worry by the way when it's going to ask you an address if you don't know the exact address of where you're going be approximate you know if you're going to antigua at a hotel in antigua right antigua it'll be all right but uh don't throw away that second copy because you're going to need it to get out okay <laughs> Today's episode, we are recording live uh, on Instagram as well. So if you want to check out maybe that recording or uh, to follow us for the next time we go live on Instagram, see some of the posts we do, some of the restaurant stuff we do is on Instagram. Guate underscore guide. That's Guate underscore guide. And you can follow us there on Instagram. We're recording live right now course when you're listening to this or watching this on youtube it's not live anymore but that's okay it's it's still good it's still the same you're getting a better experience than instagram anyway because instagram doesn't get any of the music so you're getting bonus content really no matter where you are you're getting bonus content so but my phone keeps the keeps fading away uh during the live stuff on instagram i don't get that if you were doing a live thing i guess maybe you'd be touching the screen more and it wouldn't matter anyway so here we go you've arrived and today, I'm finally going to talk about something that I've been meaning to talk about for the last two weeks. And I've got to start it right off the bat. No, you know, we're going to change things around. I'm not going to talk about it right off the bat, but I will talk about it. I will talk about it. I'm going to start with what happens when you get to the airport. What are you expecting? So when your plane lands and you hop off the plane... What's the first thing you're going to see? Well, first you're going to get out and you're going to walk upstairs and you're going to walk down this long hallway and then you're going to see a bunch of people. Now I must preface this by saying this is recorded on June 6th, 2021. So things could have changed overnight. But as of right now, you're going to walk down the hallway and see a bunch of people in lab coats who are going to check your COVID papers. And as of right now, which this could have changed overnight, the requirements to get into Guatemala is a a, uh, a COVID test 72 hours before you arrive or your vaccine card. Talked about that in the last episode. You're going to show that documentation to the people uh, right there. And once you pass that section, you're going to see the money changers. I don't suggest using them unless you brought a bunch of cash to the country. Then go ahead. But I suggest using an ATM outside of the airport somewhere in, in the rest of the country. And then you're going to go downstairs doo, 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 where they're going to check your passport. This is where they're going to take the white part of that paper I talked about earlier. Hold on to the yellow part. Then you're going to go doo, 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 downstairs, get your bags, and you've got one more checkpoint to go through before you are set off. That's where you'll turn in your yellow paper. You'll be set to go there, and then you will be off into the world. Now, you've got to the point where you've got your bag. You're ready to go. And you, if you don't know somebody who's going to be picking you up, you're going to need to somehow get a ride. And this is something that I've been meaning to mention the last three weeks. And that is how your cell phone is going to work in Guatemala. I may have mentioned it for a little bit on the first episode. I can't remember, to be honest. But I want to explain a little bit more in detail uh, the easiest way to manage the cell phone situation 
here in Guatemala. Now, the one thing I want to say is that for the first at least day or week for when you get here, get yourself the international plan, uh, whatever it may be. Oh, wow. The cats are going crazy back there. If this is the first time we've had a noise kind of thing in Guatemala, that's a good sign because there's always fireworks and stuff going on or the pouring rain, which may start at any moment. It actually looks like it might start raining here in a minute. But anyway, get your international plan going because if you have, I know on some, I don't know anybody besides Verizon, but if you have Verizon, for example, you can pay 10 bucks a day to have the international coverage. Okay. So keep that, pay the 10 bucks to have it that day. And then that'll kind of keep you, uh, it'll give you a little bit of a, a, a wiggle room to find your Guatemalan coverage, which is easy. As long as you have an unlocked phone, you need to have an unlocked phone to be able to do this. So if you decide to cancel your U.S. coverage before you come to Guatemala, no problem. There is Wi-Fi in the airport. It doesn't seem to work very good as of recording this. The last time I, well, I should say the last time I used it was about six months ago at this point. And it didn't work very well, but it, it does work well enough to be able to contact somebody to pick you up. If you need Uber or something like that, I don't, I don't know for sure if the Wi-Fi in the airport will work well enough to get you an Uber. I can't say that 100%. But we did have friends who came a couple months ago. They used the Wi-Fi to use WhatsApp to contact us and tell us that they were ready for us to come and get them. So it does work enough for that. And now there is uh, kiosks, there are kiosks in the airport that you can use to get a SIM card for Guatemala. And that is what I suggest that you do. And the other thing I suggest that you do is that you go for the prepaid. Why? In Guatemala, mostly everything is done by the internet, by apps. We've talked about that in the previous episodes. And almost nothing is done by regular text messages or uh, by by regular phone call. It's good to have the balance on your phone to be able to do those things, but you don't have to have it. You can pretty much operate in Guatemala without ever using minutes or text messages on your phone because you're gonna be using internet. Now, for example, the plan that we use and that a lot of people use is through the company Tigo. You basically got two main players here in Guatemala. You can imagine imagine it's like your Verizon, your Sprint, your AT&T, whatever that you're familiar with from the States. There's like two major players here in Guatemala who've bought up all the other companies, and that is Tigo and Claro. And the one that I, most people will say this. I'm like, oh, well, you know, uh, in the city and everything, Claro is the best. Okay, great. I've I have Tigo and it's worked fine for me. And everybody says that Tigo works better in the rural areas. So for that reason, I suggest for you to go with Tigo. I don't know the plan pricings for the plan, plan, plan prices for uh, Claro, any of that. But what I do know is that for Tigo, you're looking at 100 queues a month. And that's going to give you 8 gigs of data. If, you, if you're used to having the unlimited plan, like a lot of us are used to having unlimited stuff in the States. Um, I'd say the last 10 years or so, the unlimited plans have gotten to be, they're not cheap, but they're, they're worth it at this point in the States, I suppose. But the eight gig plan, which is 99 queues a month is more than enough. I, I've never gone over except for one time. And the only reason that I did is because I was watching a lot of stuff on my phone because we didn't have Wi-Fi at the time and using a lot of, uh, ways and that kind of stuff, like almost every day for a month for many hours a day for a month. And that was the one time I ever went over. Most of the time I end the month with about six gigs left. And we're looking, we're talking about $13 a month for your phone plan. You cannot beat that, especially in the States. You can't get the, the level of internet and everything, the high speed internet and uh, just the amount of internet for $13 a month. I'm 13 flat. That's it. 99 Qs a month. That's it. This isn't an advertisement for Claro, but I'm or for Tigo, but I'm well there in that explanation. I said both brands, so it doesn't matter. I'm just saying that it works, and the the reason also I say go for the prepaid is that I I suspect that somehow they're ripping people off who have the the uh, the not prepaid they call it postpaid, but the like the monthly a contract. Those who have a contract, I feel like somehow they count the data differently. Uh, if you have a contract, because we have friends who basically have the same amount of data as us or more that they're paying for every month and they're paying more for it every month. 
you do they do do the thing where you know you get a phone if you sign up for the for the monthly deal or whatever sometimes like they used to do in the states they don't do it so so often anymore but but the people we know who have the the contracts are always running out of data i don't understand it and they're paying for sometimes twice as much data and they're not using anything differently than we do but somehow they run out and so there's something going on there the other thing other thing to note is that when you do these internet plans you may think well, how do i call people well you can call people via whatsapp you can do regular voice calls, you can do video calls, and all your texts that you send through WhatsApp uh, are free of charge. They don't charge you for that. They don't take from your data plan for that. And then if you're an iPhone user, you can still use your iMessages. And I've gotten to the point, when I first got here, I should say, I was scared of using all my data. So I told everybody that I know who has iPhones to still use uh, WhatsApp for me because I thought that I was gonna run out of data. But I've gotten to the point now where I would pretty much tell anybody who also has an iPhone that you can use iMessage because it you're honestly not going to run out of data unless you're doing uh, voice calls or video calls all the time via your data. But the other thing is there's Wi-Fi almost everywhere in Guatemala, a lot more than there is in the States in a weird way. I mean, in, in the U.S., you go somewhere... Uh, like a coffee shop, sometimes certain restaurants or whatever. And it's kind of expected that, that they have Wi-Fi. Well, here it's like almost every business you go to that's like an established business has Wi-Fi that you can use. If you're working somewhere, there's probably going to be Wi-Fi. If you're going to rent a house or whatever, you're going to have Wi-Fi because it's pretty cheap too. Um, we're honestly, for the Wi-Fi, we're paying about the same we did in the States, for, but with lower megabytes per month we can talk about that again in a future episode that's a good idea i should write that down but um your phone plan thing go with the prepaid i know it's different probably than you're used to in the states because most of us are used to having the contract but it is a good thing and if you've got an unlocked phone that's the other important thing make sure before you come here that you have an unlocked phone if you need to pay to get it unlocked i suggest doing it Especially if you have an a, a, an iPhone or if you have a Android phone that's one of the higher uh, quality models, or whatever that's expensive, and you want to still use it, get it unlocked if you can, and bring that here. And all you'll do switch out your SIM, and you'll be good to go. You can do that in the airport. I haven't done it in the airport. I think it's a little bit more expensive, but you can do it at almost any shopping mall. There's plenty of them in the city. In Guatemala City, uh, once you leave the airport, that malls, that is, who will be able to switch out your phone and do that kind of thing. And then, yeah, it's really, it's easy to do. If there's no line, it may take you 15, 20 minutes and you'll be set. You'll be surprised. You do need to take your passport though. So if you're going directly from the airport, no problem. But if you end up uh, doing it on another day or whatever, make sure that you bring your passport. I don't know why I'm saying sure like the East Coast, but be sure that you bring your your passport uh, as you do that. So with that said, if you do end up having, if you do end up switching it, or if you have service once you get uh, out of customs in the airport, you can use Uber here to get where you're going. And you can use Uber to almost go anywhere within... I don't know, I'd say like a two hour radius from the airport in Guatemala. If we're talking about like, I don't know, let's just say a hundred miles. I bet that you could use Uber. I've heard of people using Uber to go from the airport in Guatemala City to Lake Atitlan, which seems like a really big distance. And we wouldn't use Uber for that in the States normally. I mean, you got those crazies that ride like coast to coast in Uber. And I'd love to try that someday, except I can't foot that bill. I just stubbed my toe. That really hurt. Uh, but you can, you can use Uber to get anywhere, but make sure that you have your credit card already put in it, that your credit card company knows that you're out of the country because what will happen sometimes, and I think happened to us, I think in Mexico City this happened to us, I can't remember. We had Uber downloaded, had the credit card connected, or maybe it was a credit card that expired. It connected the, the, the credit card to the app. And then when the credit card went, when Uber went to charge the credit card, it got declined because the credit card was like, what are you doing trying to ride Uber in Mexico? That seems kind of weird. So then I had to get my app on my phone. And this is where having the data on your phone really matters because I was able to real, real quick, like get my phone out, 
hit the thing on the app saying that, yep, that it was me. Do it again on Uber. Uber worked fine. Don't be afraid. Be vigilant. I mean, don't when when you order the Uber, make sure the car that comes is the car that it says is coming. Check the license plate. Check the ratings of the person. If you order it and you don't like the way the person uh, is rated or whatever, cancel it. Um, and now somebody out there who's an, been an expat for a long time here is going to watch this and be like, how dare you cancel it? That's their life's wages. And da, 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 da. Look, I understand that. And I'm, I am for supporting Guatemalans and everything the tip very well tip. When you, when you get a ride from somebody tip them well, because a good tip for like the maximum tip you can do on Uber may not be for us in, uh, in dollars very much, but it is a, a bunch for somebody who is just doing Uber all day. So tip well. But if you don't feel comfortable uh, with the person that you're going to be riding with, or if you're in any situation and you don't feel comfortable, don't stay in that situation. You're free to do something different. It's not that big of a deal. Just go for it. All right. So anyway, uh, what are we on to next? The things that you will see. I did want to warn you a little bit. Once you get off the airplane, I know we're kind of jumping around uh, here and there, here and there, uh, Things that you will see once you get off the airplane that may be shocking to you, depending on where you come from in the States, is, and depending on how you think about these things, you are going to see more guns in public than you're used to seeing in the U.S. I'm talking about there's armored guys in the airport. They're always pretty nice, but they are not up, they like, they do not want to joke with you and they really don't want to talk to you. So <laughs> nothing bad is going to happen, but. Just, just know that that's a thing, especially like the last checkpoint you have, uh, or the first. It's it's when you get your passport stamped. There's armed guys there. When I first came to Guatemala, got in the van on the way out, got onto the highway, I looked to my left, and there is a truck with a bunch of guys with shotguns in the back. That is normal. It, they weren't like cartel people or anything, gangsters. They were, they were policemen. But that kind of thing is more normal here. And the... I can talk about the reasons behind that, but the thing is, it's more of a security deal and it's more for the, the businesses and for the people in general to feel comfortable and it's for security. And you'll see these things when you go into banks, you'll see them sometimes when you go into certain shopping, uh, establishments, when you go into certain stores and that kind of thing, there are armed guards and that's just how it is. It's, it's normal. So get used to it. That's what I have to say about that. Uh, other than that, that is about the strangest thing you may see when you get off the plane at the airport, except for the first time that my wife came, we went down the escalator from the, from where you get out of the plane down to the customs and baggage area. And all of a sudden there was a marimba band of airport employees. And I haven't seen that since COVID happened, but that may be something you'll see. And if you do, just count it as your first cultural experience as you make your journey here to Guatemala. So that music signifies, as you know, that this is the point in the program where we talk about the way that you can support this podcast, and that is by going to patreon.com slash guate guide. You know, my dream for doing this, this whole podcast is to hopefully be a springboard to possibly eventually being able to help people out in a more tangible way as they come as missionaries or as expats to Guatemala. One of my dreams is to have locals uh, employed who are trusted, being able to guide, you know, the gringos do various things. And one of the ways that you can possibly make that happen is by supporting this podcast by going to patreon.com slash guate guide and link of course is below or in the show notes and if you do that you will be privy to some extra things that the rest of the audience doesn't get so that's guad guad 
patreon.com slash guide. Oh, yeah. So this is the second time that I've had to do this. The first time I recorded it, just a couple minutes ago, my computer froze, the video went away, I had to stop the stream on Instagram, I had to figure out what was going on, and I thought that all my files were lost, and I'm trying to record in a different way this time. And so I'm recording directly to the computer, usually I, I use a GoPro, put the audio together, and blah, da 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 Anyway, I'm trying a more direct way to do it this time, and I, I thought to myself, well, that was dumb because you just lost everything. But l thankfully, that isn't the case. We're still with you. That recording went to about three minutes, and this one is at almost three minutes that I'm doing right now, so we'll see if we make it past that. And hopefully I don't get too far into it and then realize that the whole thing has stopped recording. Anyway, this is the listener feedback portion of the show, which honestly is one of my favorite parts of the show because we get to interact with you. And how can you do that? A couple of ways. One of the ways is if you go to Anchor, like the thing on a boat, like Anchor.com, or sorry, Anchor.fm, like the radio. So they get the thing from the boat, the thing like the radio, and then Guate, like half of Guatemala, and then Guide, like the TV thing they used to have in the past. So if you remember all of those tips you go to anchor.fm slash guate guide and there's a button on there where you can send us audio feedback if you also want to do audio feedback uh, and it, it may be an easier way who knows go to uh go to your email send us an email at guate guide at protonmail.com and uh so i'm just laughing it's a uh, <laughs> Anchor, it's like a boat, then the radio, then half of Guatemala, and then the, like the TV guide. Anyway, so you can do that. And then also Instagram, Twitter, Guate underscore guide. And one of the ways right now we get most of our feedback is from the comments in YouTube. At the end of this video, I'm going to set up the link to see the video that I'm going to talk about the feedback for this week. We went to Denny's in Guatemala City. And one of our friends here, a Guatemalan, was so excited when they built this Denny's in Guatemala City because he had been to, uh, I think, Denny's and other just breakfast-type restaurants in the States when he went and, and uh, visited some of his, his wife's family in the States. And uh, he was so excited for the Denny's to open. So he goes to this Denny's like three times, and every single time he sits there, he gets his, uh, his eggs and stuff, and then he waits forever for his pancakes. And when he asks for the pancakes, they never acted like anything was wrong, and they just brought him and didn't apologize or anything. So he's telling me this story and I'm thinking, that's so weird. Like, I don't understand why this service is so terrible at this Denny's. And so we went and tried the Denny's a couple weeks ago. And uh, like I said, the link for the video will be in the description, but it'll also be right at the end of the podcast here on YouTube. You'll see the, the banner or whatever. You can click on that video and, and watch it. We go to Denny's, make a video about it. And what I learned was that when you when they serve the breakfast there if you get something that comes with pancakes they don't bring the pancakes right away because they don't want them to get cold so they want you to eat the other stuff and then when you want the pancakes you can ask for them maybe they just didn't say that part to our friend when he went i felt bad but we went and had denny's had a great time but the thing that i want to talk about in the feedback section today about this is that i got this feedback on youtube that was really rude, and I don't understand why, and I'm so confused by this. And the other thing is, I, earlier, on our YouTube channel, which you're on right now, if you're watching this on YouTube, this is really dedicated to showing our life and stuff and interesting things in, in Guatemala. If you're just on the YouTube channel, the podcast is just kind of part of it. We may end up doing a separate YouTube channel just for the podcast and keep them separate at some point. We'll see how it goes. But on another video we did, uh, I can't remember. I think it was our first day in Guatemala, something like that. Somebody com There's all these great comments. Welcome to Guatemala. So glad you're here in this beautiful country. Thank you for coming. Blah, 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 blah. And then somebody will answer something really rude like, 
you guys sound like you're complaining all the time. Which is like crazy to me because we we never not one of my like main one of my goals and something that I do when I talk to other people about Guatemala, especially uh, to Americans, as I never how do I say this? I try to never badmouth Guatemala because Central America and pretty much every other country besides the states already has this bad image that like I'm trying to combat. So yeah, there's a lot of frustrating things here, but I don't talk about them most times with our friends from the States. If I'm trying to, I, because I want people to see things in a different light. That's part of the reason when I, why I want to do this podcast. Yeah. There's things that are difficult, but that shouldn't stop you from pursuing what God wants you to do or, per, you know, pursuing a vacation or for looking for a retirement place. Like these things shouldn't stop you. Yeah. It's difficult, but we've got terrible things in the U S as well. I mean, and, and also there's shopping malls here in Guatemala that are nicer than any mall in the U S don't believe me. Come on down and see. But anyway, this person acted like I was complaining. Well, on our Denny's video, this guy wrote this whole thing saying that we shouldn't be grateful that the food in America sucks and that the food at Denny's is the, like the best Guatemalan cooking in the world. And I was just like, so confused because n not in, at one point in the entire video, did we complain about the service? In fact, like I was surprised at how good it was and how much it was like Denny's. And also, just so you know, and I'm not going to name the person, but I hope he sees this because I want him to know that I we like Guatemala. We liked Denny's. We liked the food. And the Denny's in Guatemala was better than anyone I've been to in the States. You know why? Because it had a play place. And it also had an elevator. And I've never been to a Denny's in the United States that had a play place or an elevator. And so I, I just bring that up because that was like the most interesting feedback we got this week. Didn't get any questions or anything this week, but I did get that feedback on our YouTube channel on a different video. And I wanted to mention it because it just, it blows my mind. I think part of it, I got to be honest, is a cultural thing and a language thing. The comments that I get of people saying that we're ungrateful or something like that. I, I think there's a little bit of a language barrier and maybe my tone of voice or our tone of voice may seem like we're complaining or something, but we're not because my mission in doing these videos and podcasts about Guatemala is never to make it look bad. In fact, it's the opposite. I want people to want to come here uh, because who knows what God may have for you in another country. And the only one that uh, you know, I'm doing a podcast about, which is Guatemala. So anyway, that was my listener feedback. It, it blew my mind. And I just, I, I've been thinking about it all week because I was so shocked at like how rude it was. And I replied and I said that, you know, we liked it. We liked the food. We, we liked Denny's. We like Guatemala. I don't understand why, why you think we didn't. And somebody gave it a thumbs up. I don't know if it was the original writer, but anyway, you can, you can follow us on, on social media, on all those things. That'd be cool. All right. This has been episode three of Guatemala guide. I thank you for, for supporting us, for sticking through it to the end. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. I want to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. A thousand, I tell you, because then I can make that sweet, sweet moolah. Yeah. No, but that would be cool if we get the thousand subscribers by the end of the year. But please, if you haven't subscribed on audio or on Facebook, hit the subscribe button. You can download it on the go. If you're on, if you're on the audio, send us an email, guateguide at protonmail.com, patreon.com slash guateguide. And please give us a, fo a follow on Instagram where you can see more fun stuff. We'll do the restaurant reviews there. Maybe we'll do some live stuff on Instagram, restaurant reviews, that kind of stuff until we get the Patreon going. Because then once we get Patreon going, you're going to have to pay to see that. Anyway, thank you so much. Glad to have fun with you again for another episode, Guatemala Guide. See you next time.